welcome to Straight Talk with Carly Lissa Thorne. And I have with me today Sandy Rogers. And we're going to be talking about networking and referrals. And I'm going to ask her a very interesting question about networking and referrals. And one of them is, one of them is how did she become to be known as a networking queen? Well, it's actually been known, I've been called the referral queen and the networking queen, but uh, referral queen is what seems to have stuck. And it actually came about after um, a business that I had went under, and I went into a pretty deep, dark depression. Uh, I, was, I was very disappointed in a lot of things. I, I ended up in bankruptcy. This was back in 2005. And I had a very good friend of mine who was building websites long before anybody knew what websites were. And he was one of those friends that, you know, when you're in that space, you can be on your pity pot and they love you anyway. Well, I think I'd been on my pity pot too long because he called me one day and he said, I want you to log onto the internet. Okay, what do you want me to do? And he said, I want you to type in AskSandyRogers.com. And I was like, what? what did you do? So up pops this website, AskSandyRogers.com, the referral queen, with my picture in the middle of the page. And I said to him, Dan, take that down. He said, it's who you are. It's what you do. Now go to work, damn it. You can't give it back. And he hung up on me. <laughs> And the truth is, is that I got known as the referral queen because that's what I do. I, I'm one of those people that, you know, networking is a skill for most people. It, it takes a little bit of understanding what a successful networking, what networking looks like. And for me, I have always, when I meet people, they just kind of, it goes into this little brain back here into the database. And it might be years later that I'll meet somebody and they'll be talking about something in a conversation that I had with a person maybe 10 years ago. And it was like, oh my gosh, you guys need to meet each other. They're doing something similar, blah, blah, blah. And, and out of that, I've, I've just done that innately for years and years and years. And people started calling me the referral queen, the networking queen. So that's kind of the backstory of how that came about. And, and truthfully, it took me a long time to embrace that title because I thought it was kind of arrogant but once I did, people looked at me and they were like, well, yeah, you are. <laughs> so, so that's the story of the referral queen and how that came about. And it's kind of funny. I, I know you're called the referral queen. And in my brain, though, I, was so, I knew we were talking about networking and because referrals. They, because and it, it's just understand. one of those things. They're, they're so synonymous for me. Yeah. And, I'm, yeah. and I'm the same way. I'm, and it was funny. When I was told about you, I was like, i got to interview her because I'm the same way. I'm all about networking and referrals, and yeah. people are always saying, you got to talk to Carly. She will totally hook you up with yeah. this person or that person, and between my radio shows, and I have the same kind of personality where I'm always yeah. you know, putting people together. And so I, when I started, I'm like, okay, networking, referral, networking, referral. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I know. People, people say, call Sandy. She knows people. <laughs> you know? So... Yeah. So I thought I'd just I find it fun. Yeah. It is. It's it is. It's absolutely so much fun. And I, I don't know what I would do not putting people together. It's just such a fun yeah. thing for me. I, I but, can't not do it. <laughs> and I think the two of you are have a really hard time, even with us seeing each other, not tripping over each other, because the two of us have such this fun, spunky <laughs> energy. Yeah. So that's okay. I think the group's gonna have to deal with it. It'll work. <laughs> It'll work. <laughs> I'll behave. We'll both behave. We'll 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 attempt to be mindful of staring at each other and not tripping over each other. <laughs> so this is going to be a fun interview. So I thought what we're what the two of us are going to do is I think we're going to really open people's eyes on how important it is to open our, our literally our mouths, use our voices and really impart to people how important it is to network and refer people that and, and that how we can actually grow our businesses and actually use the referrals in trusting businesses, resources to other people. So mm -hmm. I'd love for you to actually, because a lot of people don't know, as you said, what is networking? So let's define what networking is. So I'd love for you to share to the audience, what is networking? Well, for me, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step back to something that you said, for me, the success in networking is not as much opening my mouth as it is opening my ears. And really listening, 
because when we're when we're trying to open our mouth to talk about something we're not hearing what somebody has said and so for me what I teach and what I coach is learn to zip it <laughs> and open it and only open this after you've really heard what somebody is saying to you and if it's if it's a, a you know an introduction to someone that you've just met you're at a networking event or you're out to lunch and you're with some friends and somebody else shows up and they want to want to introduce you pay real close attention to what that person is saying and you know it's never about me it's about them so for networking, to define networking, that's what I define it as. It's building a relationship, and the only way you can build those relationships is if you're really listening to the people that you're, you're with. Out of that will come the opportunity to open the mouth and share the resources or share a referral or whatever that might be, but you can't, in all good quality, be a referral source for someone if you haven't really heard what it is that they do and what they're sharing. And that is a very valid point because when I open my point of opening the mouth was is the referral part. And right. you're absolutely absolutely but before correct. you can get to that referral part, you really have to know who it is that you're referring. You really have to know what it is that they do in order for you to give that quality referral. And what you're saying there is very important because for me, I won't refer someone unless I actually, I take a step further, I won't refer someone unless I've actually read their book, have done literally some part of their service. Mm -hmm. For me, if I'm going to refer Sandy, if I don't know her, have interviewed her, have spent some quality time with her, it's really hard for me to refer someone unless I know them on some level because it's it, my reputation. It, it's the no like, and trust factor. Exactly. Now, sometimes for me, I'll, I'll give a referral and I often will qualify it if it's somebody or, or a business that I don't really know but somebody's looking for something that I know that business might do but I'll qualify it and say I know that Joe Smith does that I haven't done business with Joe Smith but there's there's a resource for you if especially if I don't know more than one person if I know more than one person more than one business that does whatever it is that person is looking for I will often refer them to two or three people and say listen you need to do your due diligence and figure out what will work for you how personalities match how business processes match so um, you know it's I, I use that distinction in there to Typically, I'll refer to somebody that I know, like, and trust, but if it's somebody who needs something and I don't have anybody in my network that does that, but I know somebody that does, I will give the referral in that way. And typically, I, I like to give a referral. When I give a referral, I will do it in a couple of ways. I will do an email introduction so that Joe over here who's the plumber knows that Bob who's the, the the residential customer that needs his service that they get they are introduced in that way ideally I will pick the phone up and make the referral in that way that's a quality referral and also it does also let the people know that you've thought of them right right they know right. where the source is coming from right. and they'll also treat and the customer appreciate. very Way. Oh, they they will. They they appreciate it. We all do. I mean, think about it. When somebody calls me and says, "You know, Sandy, so and so is looking for your service, and I gave them your name and number." Guess what? The next time I need the service that that person called and referred me, I'm likely going to call that person before I call somebody else. So now let's get into um, giving people tips and tools and how this actually helps grow your business in doing this. Tips and tools. Oh gosh, this is this is a whole day workshop. <laughs> it is. It's it like, is. You know, I always like but to give people resources and giving them steps and things to look for or tips and tools. I mean, that's the point of doing these shows. They're giving absolutely. people some actual valuable things to walk away with. So, so here's here's the piece that I would say since we're focusing on networking. Here's here's what the direction I'll take this. So, and and you brought it up earlier. Oftentimes, people don't like to network because they don't know how to network. They, they're they intimidated, they walk into a networking event, whether it's a chamber business mixer or a private leads group or 
any kind of a big gathering and they're intimidated by it. And oftentimes the reason they're intimidated is because they really don't know how to network. And a lot of networking is what I said a minute ago, it's listening. When when you meet somebody, when I when I tell people, when I coach people about going to a networking event, go with a plan in mind. Go with a plan that you want to meet one or two people that you need to either further your business or you know maybe you know somebody that needs to meet someone. So you're you might plan in mind that you want to meet one or two people in two particular areas that you might need help with in your business. And let's say you need to find a printer. Let's say you need to get business cards done and you don't want to go to Vistaprint, you want to do a, a local printer. You don't know anybody. So go with that in mind and talk to the person who's hosting that event. Again, if it's a big, huge event, sometimes that's difficult to do. But ask the person at registration when you're, when you're checking in. I need, to fit. I need to find a printer. Do you know if there are any printers here tonight? And if not, do you know of any printers that I can contact? So ask that person to introduce you and they're going to say, oh my gosh, yeah, Jim, Jim over here is a printer. In fact, he's a print broker. He can probably find whatever it is that you need. Let me introduce you to him. So go and meet Bob. Tell him what your needs are. But then ask Bob, Bob, what do you need in business? Who do you need to meet? What can I do for you? It turn that table around and it takes the focus off of you and it puts it back on Bob and Bob is probably going to go, wow, nobody's ever asked me that before. Here's what I need. Thank you for asking. And then zip it and listen. So that's, that's key tip number one. And, and it all comes back to building relationships. You've just had an opportunity with meeting Bob and telling him what your needs are, you open the door for Bob by saying, and what do you need? So now you're going to begin to build that relationship. Networking and referrals are all about relationships. Every, everything that we do, whether it's in business or our personal life, it's all about relationship. So the more that we can know somebody, the more we can help them what, with their needs, the better our networking experience is going to be. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Let's also now, talk about, I'd also like to also touch about a little bit on referrals because mm -hmm. we are talking about both networking and referrals. Right. What are good ways to give referrals? Like you talked about the email component, the phone component. Let's give some a little bit valuable tools on how to actually give referrals because you brought them up. I'd like to keep them all, you know, succinct. Mm -hmm. Giving a referral, again, is knowing what it is that the person needs that you're giving the referral to. Okay? So um, let me try to give an example here, a, a little bit of a different example. Um, I, I know that, let's just, I'll just use you as an example. Let's say that I know some people that um, would love meeting you and knowing what it is that you do in several different ways. Okay, So I'm going to talk about Carly and what Carly is doing and because you and I have now had this, this dialogue and this exchange, I now know a little bit more. So the referral becomes more of a, not only a referral but a recommendation. Because now I can say in all good in all good conscience that, you know, Carly is a woman who keeps her word. She's highly technically um, um, educated. I mean, she walked me through this thing so quick and simple. It was like, dang, nobody's ever done that before. She saw how things need to be done in order to reach the goal that she and I both wanted. So giving a referral the more you know somebody, the more, and it's not that you've necessarily done business with them, but you've gotten to know who they are. It makes it much easier to give that referral. And again, it's about paying attention to the people that are in your network so you know when you can give a referral. Now, for somebody who comes to me directly and says, Sandy, I need a referral to 
whatever the business might be or a resource or a service might be. Because I've, I've really developed relationship with the people in, in my database, in my network, it's pretty, it's pretty easy for me to go do that. And I often will, if I don't have somebody, I'll know somebody to send them to for that referral. Is this making sense? So the key to, to giving good quality referrals is knowing who's in your network. And the way that you know who's in your network is by touching them. You know, how often do you reach into your network? How often do you know who's out there doing what? And the way that you do that is in a variety of ways. You're, you're going to do it at a networking event. Maybe you're going to see some people at, at different business networking events that you're at. But also, how often are you picking the phone up and reconnecting with somebody? You know, we've gotten so accustomed to doing the text and the Facebook and the emails, we've lost touch with that live person. So I, I know this is like not answering that question directly, but the best way that I can answer that is be in relationship with your network. And that way, when it's time for you to give a referral, you're going to be, it's going to be real easy for you to do that. And vice versa, when it's time for them to give a referral for what you're doing, because you've taken that time to know them, touch them, talk to them, not just Facebook and email, or text, that's, that's really how you build a great referral network. And I have to agree with you. I've, I've actually done a couple shows on technology and social media. And I think in some ways technology has brought us closer and further apart. At the for same exactly time. For exactly the reasons you're talking about. Yeah. I think so it, and I have to give technology a lot of kudos because for people that are disabled or literally can't get out of their Absolutely. home. Absolutely. It's advanced tech. It, it, it's, it's just like doing what we're doing right now. Exactly. Holy cow, this is fabulous. It is. Fabulous. I mean, it's given... It is. It's given, again, a lot of people a way of actually being able to connect. People right. from all over the world are connecting. And at the same time, it's given us a laziness and not right. picking up the phone and literally connecting with people. You like know, pick, pick the phone lazy. up. Because we call. do have Facebook and we do have text and we have Twitter and all that. So I, I say call the people in your network. You know, make a plan every month that you're going to reconnect with people that you haven't seen in six months. Pick the phone up and say, let's go have coffee. Let's have a beer. Let's have a glass of wine. But go reconnect in a way that you're, you're keeping that relationship strong. And I think we also have to make ourselves in some ways of getting our tushes out of our homes and going to those networking events. Right. I think a lot of and times we've gotten complacent to being homebodies because it is so comfortable right. to not have to go anymore to a lot of events because of all social media. Right. right. And, and going to those events, again, I tell people, have a plan. Now, if you just want to go and just be social, that's fine. But oftentimes what I hear from my clients and from people when I teach classes is that networking doesn't work. You have to have a plan in order for it to work. Just because you've gone and handed out a business card and collected business cards, that's not building relationships. That's collecting pieces of paper. It's not building a relationship. So the, a, a key, again, is follow-up. If you've met somebody at a networking event, and maybe it was just a brief introduction, but you know, you look at their card when you get back home or wherever it is that your 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 office, wherever it is that you're you're looking at this card and you go, "You know what? I really need to connect with that person." Pick the phone up. Don't text them, don't email them. Pick the phone up and say, "You know what? Mary, we met at that at that business mixer last night at the chamber. We didn't get to spend much time together, but I really would like to know more about what you do." Do you have time for coffee? Can we meet close to your office? Make it convenient for them. Now, if we live in a big metropolitan area like, like Phoenix is or LA or any, any of these, sometimes that might, might not be easy to do. But maybe you can meet in the middle somewhere. But take the time, literally, to do that follow-up. Don't just put Mary's address in your in your database or wherever it is that you keep it and then send her an email or put her on a mailing list. Really take the time and make that person feel important. Now, 
the, the other side of that, I will say, however, is that if it makes sense that Mary could also be a client or a customer for you, take that time to say, Mary, I want to know more about what you do, but I also would like you to know more about what I do because I think there's a synergy here. Be authentic with it. Don't, you know, so many people, and I, I don't mean to slam this, so I hope nobody gets the wrong idea. Network marketing is an amazing industry. It has, it has created so many opportunities for tens of millions of people. However, my experience with a lot of people that go into network marketing have never done business before. And they don't know how to build a relationship. And they go out there and they, they want to what I call throw up on somebody. Oh my gosh, oh good, I'm going to enroll somebody in my organization. And they don't take the time to learn who that person is. So my caution would be is that if you're going to do that, make sure that you get the opportunity to talk about what you do as well. It might not happen in that 30-minute coffee that you have, but set the, set the stage and plant the seed to that Mary to say, you know, Mary, I really do want to know more about what you do, but I also want like for you to know what I do. So it, it's being responsible in that way, and it's doing the follow-up in that way. And if you say you're going to do something, if you say to Mary, you know what, I have somebody I want to introduce you to, do it right away. Don't, and, and we do this, I've done it, we get busy and we forget, and a week goes by and Mary calls and says, you know, you were going to introduce me to so-and-so, and it's like, oh my gosh. So do your best to follow up and do that in a timely way, because again, it sets you up as being a great referral source. Yeah, our word is so important, and that is how we set up trust, likability, right. again. Right. And right. one of the things that I've gotten, this is what I do, and it's kind of a fun thing for me, almost, <laughs> you know, we have smartphones. And you got to remember, handing out business cards, um, I do something that's kind of anti-networking. I don't actually bring business cards to networking events, and I'll tell you why. It's become, because what people don't get is we get all these business cards and most of them line up on the floor, honestly. These people, you get all these business cards and they don't know what you know what to do with them. So I've gotten in the habit of, you know, we have these wonderful cell phones. And there's someone I really, really like that I really, really want to connect with. I'll actually ask them for all their information. I'll actually key it into my phone. And when, the minute I get home from that networking event, literally the minute I get home that night, even if it's at 2 o'clock in the morning, I literally will actually put together an email that night and say, you know, it was really, I really, really enjoyed meeting you, and I'll actually put in key points of, so they know that I was really interested. You know, like, literally things like, I love the, that dress you're wearing, like key points, they know that I was paying attention. Yeah. Or conversation that we had. Yeah. You know, Repeating like, something that you had in a conversation. Yes. Yeah. So that I, and by the way, in my phone, I'm actually putting key notes that they were wearing a blue dress, we talked about X, Y, and Z, mm -hmm. and I've gotten all their information. I've gotten their name, I've gotten their, you know, their email address, and the minute I get home, I don't care what time it is, I'm doing it right then and there. Mm -hmm. So that's a very valuable thing that meant something to me. And I, I immediately do that email, and I would like to follow through on having a conversation about what we were talking about. Because right. I realize that you come home with all these business cards, and literally, and I know that I give it, when I give out business cards, I know what's going to happen to those business cards. I know they're not going to go anywhere. So I would rather only, like you said, go in with the plan, I'm seeking out something specific. I'm now, mind you, I'm taking business cards from them, but I'm not giving them anything. And I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a different spin on that because I am about business cards. And I do eventually. Not, I not do. every not everybody has a smartphone yet. Yeah. Not no, everybody, I get that. I get not everybody that. is technologically as advanced as 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 you are, as an example. The business card, and and I've I've run into this in in two different ways. Personally, I find when somebody comes to a networking event, you're there to network. If you don't have a business card that I can take with me, I look at that as, well, oh, it's all about you and it's not about me. I have no, no but way there, to... No, wait, wait a second, though. I do take their business card and I tell them. I will. I, ran, I basically say to them I ran out of business cards. Whatever. My point is I do take one from them and mm -hmm. I immediately email them at night my information. So I, I get that, I get that, but again, I'm going to say being responsible. Right. I find that 
people who come to networking events that don't bring business cards and, and say, oh, I ran out of them. And then later you hear, I never bring cards with me. I don't want everybody, you know, I don't want everybody to have my card. You never know when that card that you've given to somebody gets set off in a stack someplace mm -hmm. that two months later they're, they're going, oh my gosh, that's that person that I met. Mm -hmm. And I need their service. So I, business cards are cheap. They're cheap. Yeah. They're the cheapest form of marketing that you can do. So take the business card and hand them out. That, that's, again, that's my opinion. I agree with you that it's great that we've got the smartphones and we have the technology to do that. You know, take a picture of the person, you know. Um, whatever you need to do, but do it so that you can be responsible and do that follow-up in a timely fashion. Which I do. So that's the yeah, thing. I mean, absolutely. I always do that. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a great idea. I mean, that's a great idea to do. But again, not everybody's quite there with that technology, especially people in my age range. I'm 65. You know, the 20-year-olds, the 30-year-olds, the 40-year-olds, they got it, you know? But but yeah. those, and there's a lot of us that are still in business out here. So again, sometimes it's it's a good thing to do an old-fashioned way of doing business. Yeah. And I do usually have, you know, some. It's just that I, I, I can usually feel, I'm not saying I don't don't have some and I don't yeah. ever give them out. It just depends yeah. also where I'm at, what type of event it is, and you know, all right. that stuff. Yeah. I just don't, you know, wind up just like, you know, giving them to like every single... Again, this goes back to the teaching people how to network. Have the tools with you that you need. A business card is a tool. That's right. all it is. It's a tool. You know, make sure that you, you know, if, if you can, have your calendar with you because you never know when somebody says, oh my gosh, I really need to meet with you. And they pull out their smartphone and go, okay, I can see you at 2 o'clock on Tuesday. Does that work for you? You know, exactly. have the tools with you to be able to do business instantly if that's appropriate. Okay, I knew we. I knew you and I would have tons to talk about. <laughs> so we have like very few minutes left. So oh my gosh, it goes by so fast. Yes, it did. So what I I like to because we did not talk about this. So how does networking and referrals grow your business? We did not discuss that at all. So we talked about networking and we talked about referrals. What we did not address is how does any of that grow your business? Through the relationships that you've de that you've developed, it all goes. It always comes back to relationship, and how you're doing your follow through, follow up, follow through, follow up, follow through. You know, it, it that really is how it grows your business. It networking by itself doesn't, referrals by itself doesn't. You you they really do go hand in glove, um, and the key is the follow up and the building the relationship. If you're not if you're not doing that on a consistent regular basis, you might as well not do any of it. You might as well just close your door because especially if you're a solopreneur, which is a lot of the clients that I work with, um, or independent contractors. You know, there, there's a lot of people who are insurance agents that are doing network marketing. It's building your business is about building the relationship through the art of networking and through being a resource for referrals. They, they really go hand in glove. If you're not doing one, the other isn't going to survive. Now, the other thing we need to do, since this is a podcast, I need for you to share your name again and also to spell out where people can find you. Awesome. My name is Sandy. Rogers, and that's Rogers without a D. Lately, I've been having to do that with people. And they can find me on my website at asksandyrogers.com. And that's A-S-K-S-A-N-D-Y-R-O-G-E-R-S.com. And I'm well, in the Phoenix, been, Arizona area. It has been an absolute delight having you, Sandy. Oh, and Carly, this has been great. Thank you. You're a great interviewer. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm sure I'll be talking to you once again. I'm sure I'll be putting together referrals. <laughs> <laughs> I will be putting together an entire blog blog post, which will have the embedded podcast, the embedded video, and all your links so everyone can find out where they can find out more information about you. Wonderful. So I uh, look forward to putting that together. 
And um, everyone, you've been with uh, your host, Carly Lissa Thorne, and you can find me at carlissathorne.com. I wish everyone a wonderful evening, and I look forward to bringing you more wonderful content. So I look forward to seeing everyone next week. Thank you so much, everyone. And thank Sandy, you, Carly. thank you so much for being with me. Thank you. It's been I'm a delight. My appreciation. Thank you.